Hello everyone. This video is what you should know about self-hypnosis. Hypnosis has been defined as a state of heightened suggestibility in which the client is able to uncritically accept ideas for self-improvement and act on them appropriately. When a hypnotist hypnotizes their client, it is known as heterohypnosis. When an individual puts himself in a state of hypnosis, it is known as self-hypnosis. In both cases, the subject has achieved a heightened state of suggestibility. Even in a hetero-hypnosis, the client really controls the response to suggestions. Actually, all hypnosis is really a matter of self-hypnosis. The client enters into the hypnotic state when he is completely ready to do so. This may require from one to many attempts before it is achieved. Even if the client insists that he wants to be hypnotized immediately, he may be resisting hypnosis unconsciously. In self-hypnosis, the same thing usually takes place. The client is anxious to achieve self-hypnosis, but somehow the state eludes him. What's wrong? It may be that he is unconsciously resisting it, hasn't conditioned himself sufficiently, or has achieved the hypnotic state and doesn't know he is in the state. This last statement may be surprising, but we will examine it in detail a little later on. Most experts agree that about 90% of the population can be hypnotized. My own feeling is that probably 99% can be hypnotized. Who among us is not influenced by suggestion? Aren't we all? As we have seen, influenced by the suggestions of advertising. Don't we all have a tendency to believe what we read in the paper, hear on the radio, or see on the television? Aren't we all convinced that a name brand article is better than one that is not so well known? Suggestions play a tremendously important role in our daily lives. It begins from naming the baby with an appropriate name to securing a suitable place for interment. I would like to call your attention to a fascinating book dealing with the unconscious reasons why we do many of the things that we do. You will be intrigued with every page of this book. It is called The Hidden Persuaders by Vance Packard. My contention is that we are all suggestible and therefore being hypnotized or hypnotizing ourselves is just a matter of increasing that suggestibility that we already possess. Doesn't the hypnotist begin by suggesting relaxation? Doesn't he usually begin by requesting the client to fix his attention on a particular subject? Sometimes. Next, he suggests to the client that his eyes are becoming heavy and tired. As soon as the client closes his eyes, he suggests that he will be in a deep hypnotic state. I am sure you are familiar with this procedure. With each step, the hypnotist is guiding the client along the directed lines to get him to accept further suggestions without question or doubt. When the client achieves the ultimate state in this procedure, he has been hypnotized. He then accepts suggestions without equivocation. Let us continue with the same thought. Suppose I say to you, I'm going to stick you with this pin. It won't hurt. Would you let me stick you with a pin? Obviously not. Let us suppose that you have been hypnotized and I repeat the same suggestion. What happens then? You readily accept the suggestion as being factual. Should I proceed to stick you with a pin? You do not even flinch. In fact, you do not even feel the pain. Does this sound incredible? Isn't this exactly the same procedure that the dentists use with his patients when he has hypnotized him for the purpose of painless dentistry? Achieving hypnosis, therefore, is a matter of directing the suggestibility that we all possess into the channels that will finally produce the hypnotic state. It can be much more complicated than this explanation in many cases. But let us use this as a working premise. Everyone can be hypnotized. The time required for achieving hypnosis will vary from client to client. But for our discussion at this time, we need to understand this point. I have encountered 
numerous individuals who were extremely disappointed because they did not respond to hypnosis immediately or after several attempts. They wanted to know what's wrong. An explanation that nothing was wrong somehow did not satisfy these individuals. After all, they argued, didn't I go to a hypnotist especially to be hypnotized? Some insinuated that perhaps the hypnotist wasn't good enough. Let me explain that most clients need to be conditioned for hypnosis. And this conditioning is helped when the client practices certain conditioning exercises, such as guided meditations or reading up on the technique so that you better understand the process. In my teachings, I have found that about one out of 10 clients respond to the first attempt at hypnosis. For the most part, the laws of learning apply to self-hypnosis as with anything else that one would want to learn. It can be relatively a simple process, or it can be very perplexing. The answer lies not so much with the hypnotist as with the client. One question that arises, if I'm under hypnosis, how can I give myself suggestions? During the hypnotic state, it must be remembered the client is always aware of what is going on. He hears what is said, follows directions, and terminates the state when told to do so. In self-hypnosis, the client is in full control. Therefore, he can think, reason, act, criticize, suggest, or do whatever he desires. He can audibly give himself suggestions, or he can mentally give himself suggestions. In either case, he does not rouse from the hypnotic state until he gives himself specific suggestions to do so. Many feel if they audibly give themselves suggestions, they will awaken. In hypnoanalysis, the client answers questions during the hypnotic state. Having the client talk does not terminate the state. You can keep the talkative client under hypnosis as long as you want. Furthermore, the client can be sitting erect with his eyes open and still be under hypnosis. Carrying this further, the client may not be aware that he's under hypnosis. He can be given a cue not to remember when the therapist makes a certain motion or says a certain word that he will go back into the hypnotic state but still keep his eyes open. Only an experienced hypnotist could detect the change. Another question is, how do I arouse myself from the self-hypnotic state? You merely say to yourself that upon counting to five, you will open your eyes and wake up feeling fine. Many times the client falls asleep while giving himself post-hypnotic suggestions. This is not undesirable since the suggestions will spill over into the subconscious mind as he goes from consciousness to unconsciousness. A popular opinion about hypnosis is that the client surrenders his will to the hypnotist in the process of being hypnotized. Furthermore, many believe that once the client is hypnotized, the hypnotist has complete control of the client and the client is powerless to resist suggestion. Both beliefs are erroneous. I believe the first misconception comes from seeing techniques where the hypnotist requests the client to look into his eyes. The hypnotist suggests to the client that he continues to look into his eyes. He will fall into a deep hypnotic state. The concept that the client is helpless stems from the weird movies where the mad scientists as hypnotized clients into behaving like zombies. Naturally, there is usually a beautiful girl in the movie and she too has been hypnotized, even though the audience is sophisticated enough to realize that this science fiction drama is purely entertainment. The theme is repeated sufficiently in novels, comics and television to make an impression on the subconscious mind. It's the technique of telling the big lie so many times that it becomes believable. We are all influenced by this procedure. There is an excellent book explaining the very premise. It is called The Battle for the Mind by William Sargent. 
It describes in detail the technique by which evangelists, psychotherapists, politicians, and advertising men can change your beliefs and behavior. Following this reasoning, that the subconscious mind can be affected, you can see that a problem could present itself even though the client consciously wishes to be hypnotized. Unconsciously, there may be a poor interrelationship with a hypnotist, which can create an unfavorable climate for hypnosis. When this is the case, the client doesn't respond until such time that he relates well to the hypnotist. That's why building rapport with a client is so important. Even the most calculated procedure will fail until a positive transference relationship is established. I'm sure that you sometimes have said, for some reason, I don't like that person. If pressed for an answer, you usually reply, I can't explain it, but I just have a feeling about him. Actually, your subconscious reactions are influencing your thinking and you feel a certain way. The same thing takes place in business transactions. You either like or dislike the proposition presented to you. You may say, I have a certain feeling about this deal. You may not be conscious of the reasons, but your subconscious has reacted automatically because of previous experience along similar lines. In giving you some insight into the hypnotic procedure, I'm trying to point out certain problems in regards to the acquiring self-hypnosis. For the most part, it is not a simple procedure that is accomplished immediately. You can't just will it. It requires working towards a specific goal and following definite procedures that, which eventually lead to success. We know that the easiest way to achieve self-hypnosis is to be hypnotized and given a post-hypnotic suggestion that you will respond to hypnosis by a key word, phrase, or gesture. I have tried to point out some problems that can arise. Needless to say, these problems do not always arise and the attainment of self-hypnosis can be a relatively simple procedure. There is usually some way of reaching a client who does not respond in a reasonable length of time. Now, we come to the point where the client wishes to hypnotize himself. What happens in this situation? It would appear that the client would go under hypnosis immediately. After all, isn't he controlling the hypnotic session? Of course, this does happen time and time again and the results seem miraculous. I have clients who write about how they were able to achieve certain goals that they never dreamed possible. They write that they have achieved self-confidence and complete self-mastery and have been able to overcome problems that have plagued them for many years. These problems not only include strictly psychological troubles, but many psychosomatic symptoms as well. Many have remarked at the ease in which they were able to achieve self-hypnosis and the results they wanted. For them, it was as simple as following a do-it-yourself book. Others write about the difficulty they encounter and ask what to do about it. I shall discuss many phases of hypnosis with the emphasis on self-hypnosis. And before you begin, set your intention as an exercise before practicing self-hypnosis. Listen to soft light rain for 15 minutes and then loud rain for another 15 minutes to get into that deeply relaxed state. And with the intention, you should be able to get there. Thank you for listening. I hope this video helped you in some way and I'm hoping to post many more in the weeks to come. Thank you. I am Priscilla Lewis and you can find me at priscillalewis.com.